Hello, I'm Zonal Fit and welcome to another video on the TechQuest. With the rising cost of electricity these days, I'm always on the lockout to reduce my energy bills. If you live in the UK, you'll understand exactly where I'm coming from with this. I upload very large files on my tech videos, and there's also plenty of times when I'm simply browsing the internet and don't need the use of my Ryzen 5700X 3D to do that. Leaving my main desktop PC on for hours to upload files costs money, and I want to spend as little of that as possible on powering my home. Step in the tricky Intel N95 mini PC. For clarification, I did not receive this unit for review. I paid for this using my own money for my own personal use. Speaking of money, I paid just £72 for this mini PC new from Amazon with a little clever couponing, although it usually retails for around £100, so either way it's still a fairly cheap complete PC. So what did I get for my money? The Trigkey N95 mini PC is a no frills unit. In the box is a mini PC, one HDMI lead and a power cable, and that's it. The overall presentation is basic too, but this thing isn't a top of the line mini PC and it's packaged in line with its price point. Inside the mini PC is a quad core Intel N95 processor with a maximum boost speed of 3.4 GHz, featuring 6 megs of L3 cache and Intel's UHD graphics on board. As an interesting side note, these four cores aren't performance cores, but more in line with the architecture of Intel's E cores on LGA 1700 processors. As a result of this, the trig key sips power, around 15 watts at full load. So these things make for great low power PCs that can still handle your day-to-day -day tasks and HD videos just fine. This unit initially came with 8GB of DDR4 3200MHz RAM and a 256GB SATA based NVMe drive, a decision made to keep the cost of this thing light. The only thing I have done to this unit is I changed the RAM to a 16GB stick of DDR4 using some spare memory I had lying around and to be honest this did improve system responsiveness a fair bit. Speaking of memory support, the N95 only supports single channel RAM, which isn't a problem for your day-to-day -day tasks of course, but it's absolutely devastating if you're thinking about playing any kind of game on it. iGPUs are very sensitive to RAM frequency and configuration, and the N95 using only single channel memory will significantly hamper the Intel UHD's graphics chip on board. This isn't a design decision by the PC manufacturer here, it's a hardware limitation that will be the same in anything based off this series of processors. Moving on to the integrated graphics, the UHD graphics on board the N95 are there to drive your video at 1080p or 4K. Gaming certainly falls outside of the UHD's remit here, and this one is a lower end version of the UHD chip too, featuring just 256 shaders, it's not really designed for gaming at all. So of course that's what we're going to do with it. For today's games I'm using the slightly older Intel 6913 drivers for testing today. I've had some minor issues with Intel's latest drivers and these seem like the last ones that perform to my expectations on ARC based systems. We're playing a bunch of older games today as this will not be playing anything even remotely modern to hopefully answer a question no one asked. What can you actually play on the Intel N95 processor? It's an eclectic mix of the old and the old and we've gone for consistency today rather than ultimate performance. So what can the tricky N95 mini PC actually do? Let's get to it. We start off today with Fallout New Vegas. At 720p and using the low settings capped to 30fps, New Vegas actually did pretty well, delivering an Xbox 360-like experience on the UHD graphics. It is well known that New Vegas will run on a potato, and ladies and gentlemen, I present to you a potato playing Fallout New Vegas, very playable overall. Borderlands 2 is next. We're at medium settings here at 576p, so fairly low on the resolution and capped to 30fps, but again, playable. I know the resolution is a little low, and you might even ask how you can play at such a low resolution, but honestly, it didn't look completely terrible. Here's what it looked like in action on my screens. As you can see, it was fine despite the low resolution, and you can get by like this, and that 30 FPS cap is pretty steady too. Half-Life 2 is up now. At 720p low and capped to 60 FPS, Half-Life 2 is a solid performer on the N95 mini PC. I played this for around half an hour, and there was very little deviation in performance here. It's an older game sure, but the Half-Life 2 of today is certainly more demanding than the Half-Life 2 we got way back in 2004. It ran pretty great overall. Stellaris also ran fantastic. At 1080p and using the settings the game suggested, Stellaris is actually a fairly easy game to graphically run at least. I've played this on a variety of laptops over the years, and the performance here is broadly similar. Graphically it will run ok, although you will see more computationally difficult tasks behind the scenes slow the overall game speed down. So 10 years in game on the N95 will take longer than 10 years on say a high end desktop processor. But if you don't mind that and you just want to play Stellaris, you'll do absolutely fine. Old but gold, Sirius Sam HD also ran well enough. 
a 720p60 and using the default settings, Serious Sam was an enjoyable experience overall and the game was more than playable enough. There were dips towards the lower 40s on occasion, but as there were dips as opposed to stuttering, this didn't impact the overall enjoyability an awful lot. I've not played Serious Sam in years and this was an absolute blast on the trig key in 95. Speaking of old, Left 4 Dead 2 is also a good time on the N95. At 1080p 30 and using the game's low settings, Left 4 Dead 2 was again more than playable on the N95. I played through the entirety of the streets level, a section I play in all my testing. It ran at that 30fps target for 90% of the time, only dropping briefly when a horde was called in. If you've played Left 4 Dead 2 on the Xbox 360, then you're going to see fairly similar performance on the N95. All the while it's there sipping single digits in power. Not bad. We had to go fairly low on Sniper Elite V2, the same as Borderlands 2, but we got something that again was quite smooth overall. At 576p30 and using the low settings, I played through the middle work facility absolutely fine. I did try upping the resolution to 720p, but it quickly became unplayable at anything more than 576p here, despite the relatively low GPU usage recorded in statistics. At 576p though, the trig key was absolutely rock solid. The original release Dead Island didn't fare so well. Despite it seeming to reach 30fps, the game just didn't really feel smooth to play, even when we did see 30fps. Additionally, the game dropped frames consistently, resulting in an overall very unsatisfying experience, even at 1024x768 resolution. Unfortunately, this one's not playable. But I still need my zombie hit, so let's try Killing Floor instead. As 720p30, using the normal preset, the N95 did deliver here. I played the legendary KF West London map, and overall had a pretty good Z time. There were occasional dips into the mid-20s or so, but these didn't really hamper the overall playtime too much. So I'm going to chalk this one up as a win too. Overall, the performance was there for you to have a good time. And that's a wrap. The tricky N95 mini PC really isn't meant for games. It's a tiny PC that will get you by in your day-to-day -day browsing or sat underneath your TV as a media box. Intel's graphics actually have excellent AV1 decoding, so these things make for real nice media centers as well as daily browsing. With those tasks, the N95 does really well at a great price. It's cheap, competent, and I love its form factor. I do have a soft spot for these mini PCs, and my curiosity always gets the better of me whenever a new one comes out. As for my use, yeah, it does exactly what I bought it to do. Sit power while uploading large files, and some other light work like web browsing and writing this review up for you now. It's absolutely adequate, especially at the £72 I paid for it. You can even get away with some gaming on it too, as long as you manage your expectations on what a £72 PC will achieve. Borderlands and New Vegas were particularly enjoyable, and I did spend an entire day playing New Vegas just the way you've seen in today's video. So, you can get by on that. As for more demanding games, then you'd really need to spend a fair bit more than this on one of the Ryzen mini PCs that are available today to play anything more demanding. That's all for today. I've been Zonal Fear, and thanks for watching. Until next time, bye bye.